It looks like nothing much happens here on the road to Saguin First Nation, a small community of 3,000 in Manitoba in the heart of Canada. Thelma Favel knows that's not true. Her granddaughter, Tina Fontaine, was murdered in 2014, aged 15. I, I, I still wait for her to come home. There are six cases of unsolved murdered women in Saguin, the highest rate in Canada. I can't, I can't even leave my living room curtains open because I'm watching for her to come home. I'm waiting to see if she will make it home. But that will never happen. Somebody took her from me. Jeanette Briere's 17-year-old granddaughter, Vanessa, was murdered in 2007. I think of her every day. She's always there for me. Mm. What was she like? She was a nice little girl. She was friendly. Mm. And she liked powwows. And she had an Indian name, Walking with Bears. That's it was funny, yeah. Two of Vanessa's friends were also murdered. No one has been convicted. Nothing is ever going to change for us. Even with all these Aboriginal girls missing, murdered. I know, like, I, I used to just watch TV and then just hear about all the all these women that were going missing and and i was thinking about the families and what they were going through now i know what they're going through nothing's going to be done about it tina's body was found in a search for a man seen struggling in the waters here in the forks in the manitoba capital winnipeg where the red and assiniboine rivers join it used to be an important trading place for indigenous people and the colonizers. That day, the waters gave up a dark secret, the violent legacy of colonization. A huge vigil was held for Tina and all of Canada's missing and murdered indigenous women, a total of around 1,200. It's a statistic that's opened up issues at the heart of Canada. I believe that there can be a change. I respect where the families are, totally. But I do believe that there can be a change. It is a change that has to happen at all different levels. Changing society to stop the violence, says the Minister of Child and Family Services, or CFS, will be about individuals, families and communities but it will also be about addressing the issue of poverty. The best way out of poverty is education and employment and instilling that sense of hope for families. There are a number of issues that have happened in the history of Canada for our Indigenous people and colonization, residential schools, the 60s scoop that have left deep, deep wounds the 60s scoop was the Canadian government's policy of taking native children away from their families. Roughly 30% of Aboriginal Canadians were sent to residential schools like this one. Jeanette Briere was sent here aged three. The aim was to assimilate the children. They were deprived of their own languages and culture, and many of them were sexually and physically abused. Officially, the policy is over, but its effects linger. These women, all involved in social work, call the current care system the Millennial Scoop. 80% of children in care in Manitoba are Aboriginal. They're taken from already traumatised families and communities. Young girls placed in an unfamiliar city, poor and without emotional support, end up being groomed into selling sex for money. Selkirk Avenue is a notorious hotspot. 
See the woman says, don't call it prostitution, it's exploitation. She knows because she was one of those girls. I was a groomed child. I was a groomed child through care. Why was I groomed? Because that groomer, that man, gave me everything the system didn't give me. Everything. What I truly believed at that time, at such a young age. You just don't get it. You think, we, we choose this? I didn't choose this. It was something more instilled on fear base from my perpetrator to continue. Because if I didn't continue, was I going to get another beating? Was the gun going to be shoved down my throat again? If I didn't do what he said, would I be the next one in the river? So-called prostitution is also used to shame and blame Indigenous women. It's only one of many ways they're subjected to violence. Black Turtle has known so many victims, she thinks people won't believe her. But I lie about it because people won't believe me. That's outrageous. How could that be that I could know like six or seven missing and murdered women and children. Right now there's resistance by government to go into the roots of those problems. Grand Chief David Harper represents 30 First Nations communities in Manitoba North. Because at the end of the day they know they lacked funding on education, they lacked funding on housing, they lacked funding on economic development opportunities. Because all that goes back to the community. And the community has been asking, saying, we're, so, we're supposed to coexist here. And that, that's not happening. The effects of poor housing and poor education have compounded the collective trauma. Then alcoholism and hard drugs entered the scene. And when your children are taken away, it breaks your spirit, it breaks your home, it breaks your, your being. And when you break your being, where, where, do, you, where, where do you end up? or the other, you, you, you stick with the other, other persons that are, that are broken. Growing up, I've seen drugs coming in, into our communities. We didn't know how, how destructive they were. Next thing you know, you see them rapid. And there's different kind of drugs now. Kids are as young as eight. Mike Alexander was adopted and grew up not knowing he's indigenous. He's now an activist. Poor education also means young men learning about violence against women in the wrong way. I think, you know, as a kid growing up, you know, I think I know a little bit about, you know, sexual assault. Like, I think I didn't learn about consent until later on in life, you know. And that's really disturbing. And that's something that I have to live with, you know. And I know that I'm not the only one. But I think it's important for men to recognize that when it comes to relating with women, that it has, there has to be really good communication. Canada's new Human Rights Museum, built by the Forks, cost $450 million to build and cost a further $20 million a year to run. Yet all the spending on First Nations people, who have limited tax credit, is not translating into economic equality. While the museum was being built, Aboriginal children in care, including Tina, were being placed in hotels. There was nowhere else to put them. People say we are tax burden, but we've been here for thousands of years. And in the treaty that was signed, the handshake between the Crown and the First Nation is to coexist, to live side by side. Nobody behind, nobody ahead. First Nations are still back there. And people are fighting over these scraps. Um, and there's not a lot of dignity to it, there's not a lot of power there. It's a system, it's a colonial system uh, designed by and for men. Prime Minister Stephen Harper is resisting calls for a national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women. Our federal government here in Canada, so-called Canada, is not doing a thing to help us. And like my sisters have said, we are the ones that are speaking up. We are the ones in the community. Maybe that's because he's dodging the real issue, that colonisation has left not only deep wounds, but deep-seated racial inequalities.